All right, folks, I'm gonna try something new today and I'm gonna answer a viewer question with a video. So I recently released Graphic versus Movie Clip Part 1, where I explained how movie clips run independently of the main timeline and graphics do not. Now, Maisha had a comment. She says, hello, would you show a video on how you made the animated graphic and how you made the animated movie clip that you then used for this tutorial? Thank you. Hey, Maisha, thank you. I love comments and I love knowing that people watch this stuff. So what I'm going to do is answer your question and show you how I made these symbols with the nested animations. For a little bit of context, let me just go to Animate CC here and show people that on the stage I have a movie clip and a graphic, and when I scrub through the main timeline, only the graphic advances. Now, in the previous video, I showed exactly why that happens, but what Maisha is asking about is how did I make these symbols? So if I double click on the movie clip, you'll see that it has its own timeline with its own keyframes and its own numbers. So what I'm gonna do is really quickly run through how that was done, and at the end, tell you a little bit about my course where you can learn all about this stuff. Let's go. So let me just run through real quick how I made one of those symbols. I took the text tool, clicked on the stage, and typed the number one. Then using the selection tool, I would go to something like modify, convert to symbol, and I'm gonna call this counter graphic, and we're going to change the type to graphic. When I hit OK, I now have a graphic on the stage, and if I double click in, I get into symbol edit mode. So now in the edit bar, you'll see I'm inside the counter graphics timeline. And here's where all the magic happens. I need to add a series of keyframes here. So what I'm going to do is hit F6, which is going to add a new keyframe down here, which is an exact duplicate of the first one. And I would just select that text, type in the number two. And then to be really efficient, I would just hit F6 again, which would add a new keyframe. And then I would type in the number three. I would hit F6 again to give me a new keyframe. And I would type in the number four and hit F6 one more time. And I'm gonna type in the number five. So now I have in this timeline, I have five different frames with different content in each frame. If I go back to scene number one, you'll see that there's nowhere that I can drag the playhead, but if I add frames at frame number five, you'll see now that I can scrub through that graphic symbols timeline. Now to create the movie clip, I could do those same steps over again. I could use the text tool and I could maybe put in the number one here and change the color to be something like dark blue. And then I could go to modify, convert to symbol, and then just say, we're gonna make it a movie clip. But as a little bonus tip here, I wouldn't want to duplicate all that work. So check this out. I'm gonna copy, take the symbol here and just do a command C, command V to make another instance of it. So check it out, we have graphic and graphic, all right? Instance of counter graphic. But this one here, watch this. I can change its behavior to act like a movie clip. And now watch this. As I scrub forward, the movie clip version isn't advancing because its timeline runs independent of the main timeline and we never get movie clip previews in Animate. If I want this one to be a different color, you know, I just do something fancy like this and say that its color effect will change its tint to be dark blue. And now I've saved myself the work of creating two separate symbols. And if I wanna test this out, let me just go to test movie and animate. And now you'll see that when the actual Swift file opens up, both of them are running completely synchronized. One's a movie clip, one is a graphic. So I hope that answered your question. Once you understand how these nested animations work, there's really so much you can do. You can make the wheels of a car spin, you can make the wings of a bee flap, and so much more. It's really a lot of fun. Hopefully this basic example opened your eyes up to something new. Thanks again for the question. And if you want a better understanding of Animate CC, please check out my course Animate CC for Everyone. It's for absolute beginners and it's loaded with videos to teach you everything you need to know about working with the timeline and symbols. It's loaded with practice files and detailed step-by-step -step instructions. So check it out. I think you can be really impressed with what you can do once you understand the basics of Animate CC. Thanks for watching.